Okay, so this question is, how as a Muslim body on college campuses are we supposed to deal with topics pertaining to LGBTQ+. For example, we hosted an online event and separated so it was brothers in one call and sisters in another call. We then received a complaint that the MSA was being discriminatory against non-binary individuals and that the MSA should be more inclusive and not do any more gender separated events. Is there something that we're allowed to say that doesn't go against the teachings of Islam but also won't trigger any canceling culture um, if we're to make if we're to make comments slash remarks. Does saying we support LGBTQ plus rights um, have anything Islamically incorrect with it? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ so, uh... I've already answered parts of this question in the, in the last one. Um, I'm just going to continue from where I left off. You're presenting something that is far more convoluted. It is the intersection of our morality with uh, social pressure, along with perhaps even legal pressure, which is where the problem comes. Now in America, and I want all of you on the call to appreciate this, we thank Allah. I am thankful to Allah for the First Amendment. Realize in Europe, it is very different. And in Europe, uh, even in, in, in some countries, you are not allowed to have gender segregated uh, uh, halls or conferences. There have been Islamic conferences that have been raided by the police and fined. Why? Because bro this is in Europe. We're not talking about some third world country or some fascist regime. In Europe, in countries that are well known, the police have fined the organizations. Other organizations have been banned from having Muslim conferences. Why? Because men are on one side of the hall. There was a sign that said sisters here and brothers there. No barrier, no partition, simply a sign. And because of that, uh, there were so many issues and you know, I was there, there. it was just a, a nightmare, a nightmare. So we thank Allah that we do have a lot more freedoms in this country, by the way, than our European counterparts. Now, what is to be done? I cannot answer you fully because this requires knowledge of the law and it also requires knowledge of your campus's policies because again, every campus has the right as well to institute its own internal policies and we have to work within those policies. Now, what, what that MSA ended up doing that I was at is an ISOC, was, uh, they called themselves the ISOC, what they ended up doing was to verbally spread amongst their own uh, constituents. And when you walked in and you're a practicing Muslim, you obviously see to verbally spread. Brothers are on this side, sisters are on that side. Now, if you're gonna get one person who's gonna be really nasty and he's gonna go to the other, okay, let them, you, the person will sit there and there's gonna be an empty space all around them, you know? You cannot enforce it in that land, but you know, if the police were to come say, hey, there's no sign, it just so happened that everybody did that, right? I mean, what are you gonna do? So where there's a will, there's a way. You need to talk to your, uh, uh, your school counselors, the people in charge, you need to bring in lawyers as well and see what is and is not possible. If it's only social pressure, i.e. petition is going to be raised that the MSA is transphobic because it's only having two genders and whatnot. And it's just social pressure that's not going to go anywhere. You know, perhaps you can explain that, hey, we're not preaching hatred of anybody, but now you're hating us because of our values. Flip it around, right? Flip it around. Uh, you're, you're being cisphobic now or you're being cisgender phobic, for example, right? We have the right to, uh, to have uh, our notions as well. We're not preaching to anybody else who doesn't want to believe us. But what if all of us believe in this and we voluntarily choose? Who are you to come? between us and our rights switch it around because there is an element of who gets to call the who gets to call the other one you know uh, uh, um, phobic basically is it transphobic or cisphobic or gender phobic or whatnot uh, so that's another thing uh, also as I said explain to your own school and explain that hey this is our uh, you know morality that we have and see if you can work your way out and uh, ironically in this case I mean we might be able to find some common grounds with people that otherwise disagree with us uh, especially uh, conservative religious folks they might agree with this issue that perhaps if we can come together and say hey look we're not asking for a change in school policy but we don't appreciate this policy being applied upon us right so we also have the freedom to uh, act as we choose to please as we uh, 
as we please uh, to act, and therefore you try to, to argue from that case. In the end of the day, there are too many variables that I don't know. You need to find out uh, from all of these parties what you can and cannot do. But what you cannot do is to ascribe uh, something to Islam that is not Islamic, even if you yourselves are forced to then you don't have to say it in the name of Islam. Even if they force you to, let's say, have no segregation or whatnot, okay, that's their, 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 they can force you to do it. You should never say Islam endorses it. You should never say the Quran and Sunnah teaches us uh, you know, to do this. We firmly believe that the default is that there are two genders. And Allah Azza wa Jal says He has created you in male and female. Yes, there's a very, very small percentage uh, of intersex people uh, that have chromosomes that are neither XY nor uh, XX. That's something that is very, very uh, small percentage. However, anybody that's born biologically uh, with an XY or XX chromosome, anybody that's born uh, with normal chromosomes, the Sharia considers them to be male or female and ha different slight uh, rulings are, uh, apply to them. And that's something that historically, biologically, culturally, and religiously uh, is something that we firmly believe. Now that all of this is changing, this is going to be the new battle, right? The previous battle was the LGBT, now LGB, let's say, now the new battle is in the T and the T+. Plus. And we're going to have to remain consistent because in the end of the day, uh, if we do not maintain uh, preaching our values, then we have lost everything. The real, the only purpose that we have here really is that we have to maintain the religion of Allah in our lives and preach it to anybody who's interested. That's all that it is. We're not forcing it on anybody, but if we're going to compromise what we believe, then in reality, uh, we have reached a level where we, we, we going, going back to a previous question, we need to ask ourselves, should we even live in a land where we cannot even practice what we preach and we cannot even preach what we believe. So may Allah make it easy, but I'm overall optimistic because not only do we have the First Amendment, but also because this is an ongoing debate. We are seeing the culture wars taking place. We're seeing quite a lot of discussion going on. And uh, I, I'm optimistic that there will always be a large group of people uh, of all different faiths and of no faiths that will have similar views and we will find comfort um, you know, in that, uh, in that uh, demographics, even if it's not a majority of the land and Allah knows best. يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحون يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون